show with uh <laughs> and uh two of us try to figure out what the third of us is topicking i don't know it's week 57 <laughs> of uh the coronavirus uh it's it's i've been in quarantine since 2001 uh i don't i don't know what's going on anymore 19, 19th month of the year 2020. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's May. Apparently. Is it? Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's cold outside. Oh, Gary. Which, what the hell is that? <laughs> and, and by cold, you mean like 67? It was 59 when I took the dog wow. this morning. You know, I don't put on shoes for that. Often not, a, well, no shirt either. So that's Meanwhile, a little. Meanwhile, 50 degrees here means like, woo, t-shirts, sandals. <laughs> <sighs> uh, it's been warm here. I don't know. Sorry. It's actually although, been kind of nice here too. So. <laughs> although um, it was cold the other day and our house the downstairs has, I don't know if it's just really well insulated or what, but like, because it was cold, like on Monday, on Tuesday, it was freezing in here, even though it was like 70, 80 degrees outside, mm -hmm. it was like 65 in the house. And I'm still like with pants and a sweatshirt all bundling up and I don't want to turn on the heater because it's stupid. Um, yeah. So I, I, I feel like my perception of, uh, of, um, what's going on outside is, is skewed. Which, I mean, I guess is a general, how I feel generally too. <laughs> You're like, oh, so this is just par for the course. <sighs> yep. Um, we'll just launch into today's topic. Cool. You may or may not know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have as much social contact as I'm used to having, used mm. to having the like two people I used to see a week. Not, <laughs> I was, was going to say that you're, 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 you give off the impression of, of someone who's just so socially active generally. I'm, I'm sort of, yeah. <laughs> just my social butterfly just yeah. emerging from its cocoon. Um, but let's not discount all that barista contact. <laughs> <laughs> fair point real human beings <laughs> um so i feel like my topic list is dwindling because i'm not at less opportunity to for things to come up organically yeah like it's so i'm i'm having to scamper a bit more and being like maybe i'm like this is a word i didn't know before <laughs> So today's <laughs> so today's topic is panopticon. Panopticon. Oh, okay. I need to pull up my stupid stuff, but panopticon. Panopticon. Your stupid uh, stuff? No. Well, I mean my binary jazz stuff, which is not. <laughs> no, I no, I get what you're saying. Jeez. <laughs> wow. How do we rate? Huh. I. Yeah. <laughs> Also yeah, for we... our YouTube for our YouTube watchers, Chris has like the most ambient workspace right now. <laughs> it's crazy how there's like the transition from sunlight to like depth from his left to right. It reminds <laughs> me of I don't know if you ever flew Virgin Airlines, but it reminds <laughs> me when you got on those planes and they had like the pink lighting. <laughs> and I was I like, I'm not Virgin. cool enough to fly this plane. <laughs> An opticon. One one oh one one. Colon, I guess. An opticon. Have you ever heard it before? Uh, I have. Yes. Gary looks mad at me. <laughs> no, I I've heard it and I don't know what it is. Uh, it's. 
Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like on the verge of, of Googling it because I should know nope, what it is. That's cheating. I know it is, but like, that's like when a word is like that on the edge of my like, like knowledge, like it's hard to like resist the urge to just like, oh, what does that thing mean? I, I know what that means. I just need to refresh my memory. And I'm, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how I was when it was brought up to me. In, in my household uh, as a potential topic. <laughs> um, pan is like many. Uh, right. Opti means eyeball. Yeah, but I don't... Um... I think it's a... Um, I think it's a, uh, a pop star with multiple eyeballs. <laughs> Have you seen Panopticon live? <laughs> Can I, can I can I can I sidebar really quick? I have Panopticon to Live sounds like something that you would uh, see at a at a comic book convention. Yeah, and you, they would hand you like the the polarized three D glasses as you walk in. Gary, <laughs> um, to answer your question, the whole podcast is a sidebar. <laughs> I, uh, oh, good. I um. You almost saw me spit take. <laughs> that was so like, good. Almost a spit take. And we would have had to edit the video so it came out like a rainbow. That was almost two. That was really neat. Please don't choke. I can't do anything about it remotely. <laughs> I like to think we all have members of our household that would do something about it eventually, but <laughs> luckily. Apparently this show is dangerous. Yeah, we need to put a, uh, a warning on this. Uh, don't, don't drive during... <laughs> Yeah, also, where driving are you going is anyway? fine, just don't drink. Yeah. Well, or stay home. It's a pandemic. <laughs> Damn it. But people still drive. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have a car. What's your, so. what's your sidebar, Gary? Yeah. Oh. We've Thank sidebarred you. We've I'd sidebarred forgotten. Your sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds painful. Um, I, uh, I worked on a client project, I don't know, a while back. And I was added to their Cloudflare account. Cloudflare has this thing, like there are certain things that change that you can't opt out of email for, like changes to SSL and some other odds and ends, which means I occasionally get these emails that I can't unsubscribe from. I can't remove myself from. I just have to suffer with these emails for a domain that I could not care less about. Let me read you the title of this one. Certificate transparency notification. Hi, Cloudflare has observed issuance of the following certificate or one of its subdomains, blah, blah, blah. It's, uh, I can't do anything about it. I just gotta be aware that something, some certificate is not translucent or whatever that thing said. That's okay, I'm still getting emails from a site I worked on from an agency that shall remain nameless because they won't remove me as a user off the site and they wouldn't let me use my work email in the first place, which is why I'm receiving these emails. So I have ah, this constant Mark reminder. as spam. I know. But it's are you, are you a Gmail problem. user or no? The problem is, is they're from WP Engine, so I don't want all oh. WP Engine emails to be marked as spam because I have other Jeez. ones that are actual clients. Yeah. Um, I wonder if anyway. you can contact WP Engine and be like, hey. I tried and they said I had to contact uh, the actual user. But they're too busy. Well, the I mean, email takes bridges an awful... Left the fact that Long they time. haven't the fact that they haven't removed you uh i mean it's, it's not neither surpri here not surprising not surprising at all and and yeah but that should be a thing that gets done like if a person leaves the company the, 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 we we've run into that uh human made uh several times recently uh that uh, we have like a formal documented offboarding uh process and mm -hmm. have had to revisit it because um um we were uh one of one of our engineering managers was using his zoom account uh for various meetings because he had a pro account oh. and um he left to go to alley and uh we said oh yeah we'll change those and everybody assumed that somebody did but nobody actually did so then we were on a call like one of our normal weekly calls and um he pops on and we're like hi <laughs> and he's like 
hi. This is my room. <laughs> and then a whole bunch of alley people pop on and are like, oh shit. <laughs> it's like a weird like it's so rad. <laughs> <laughs> like he's like, uh, it's nice seeing you all. Now get off my call. <laughs> <laughs> like the sharks versus the jets. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What so, a virtual uh, rumble. Yeah, so that was one of the things. That, that, that's only one of these small things that has happened that has taught us to uh, offboard our fucking shit. Yeah. Well, you haven't, to be honest, like, you guys, like, you haven't had to? Really? Yeah, there's, there hasn't been a oh. ton of people. I mean, there's been more in the last couple of years since I've been here than there has been in, like, the history of the company. Yeah. But, and I mean, like, the history, a lot of, the history stuff of the shifts, company. Right? Hmm? A lot of stuff shifts, right? Like, it's not necessarily, it's just people, I don't know. Things change. Yeah. (laughs) The history of the company, I think, had, like, two people leave ever before I joined, so that's not really saying much. It's weird. Yeah. But good? It's, yeah, I mean, I think we're getting to a point where, where, because the company is evolving, there's more a little bit more like natural turnover, but it's still less common than probably other places. Mm-hmm. But it's like it's it's getting to the point where like now it's a normal ish thing. Mm-hmm. It's not gasp worthy of yeah. Well, Do you, still, are you are you big worthy. are you big into like SSO stuff? Does that make it any easier that like access to everything is via like your... no? Okay. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> I mean, at least, you know, a little bit. Helps. Yeah, it's more, it's less that stuff and more uh, like um, where a single individual took ownership of a particular like account from some third party thing that then oh. needs to be transitioned over. And like, because that one, and it was because that developer was a lead on, on whatever project. And then we shared it in one password. And so it became like company property, but it's still attached to one mm-hmm. person. Um, yeah. Case sure. in point is, is I, uh, there's like um, this real uh, stock ticker um, uh, API that, yes. um, that I had to sign up for because I was the lead on a project because the old API was like deprecated. So in order to update, um, I had to make a new account on their new API, which was then a subscription thing. So I created the account to get in there. Um, and then, you know, my PM went in and, and did all the, the payment stuff. And then we forwarded it on to the client, whatever. And then the client decides that ultimately the client wanted to part ways. So then we needed to transition all that stuff over to them. And so like the, the account is still in my name and all that stuff. And so we need to sort of figure out a way to like offload it to them, that sort of thing. Or like yeah. MailChimp uh, email lists and, and stuff like that that we set up for them. And Yeah. I was just remarking to someone yesterday how awesome it must have been for the people at Mandrel when MailChimp acquired them and they were like, we're already a monkey. We're already a monkey company. Like, we didn't even need to, like, get new business cards. Like, it's perfect. Yeah. Did Mandrel exist before, before MailChimp? They're... Yeah, Mandrel was its own standalone service before MailChimp acquired them. I always assumed that, that Mandrel was just, like, a side project of MailChimp. No. Huh. No. Because it's, like it's, and... it's overlapping so much that like I just assume that they were always one. One. I don't know. I mean, I don't know the entire history. Maybe they spawned off of Mailchimp. I mean, but like they were, they were two different services you paid for. At some point, and then Mailchimp picked it up. And uh, I, mean, I still... used to have an account at both. Yeah, I mean, it's still well, kind of two services, although they just use one login. But you yeah. can you can do the one thing and not really the other. Um, the whole transactional email thing is such a scam. Is it? Tell me about how it's a scam. There's a story it's, there. It's uh, no, I just think it it's just crazy that I have to pay a service to ensure delivery to like the big players like you know Microsoft and Google and well. AOL and Yahoo, I guess. I don't know. But like, you know, like to can so that my stuff ends up in someone's inbox and not marked as spam, I have to use some third party. Like, that's a scam. 
like, sure, you could set your own like DKIM up and all that kind of stuff. And you could do all the other odds and ends that validate. But more and more, these things have been layered on. And, and you know, are we any better at stopping spam? No, there's millions of spam messages in my spam folder. So these things are not effective, you know? <laughs> like if they were effective, we would not have spam. But instead, no, it's just one more thing that you need to do to prove that you're legit beyond what's reasonable for a small business, you know, which is why these transactional email companies exist. I guess, I guess it's a dumb argument because it would be like, well, at and is a scam because I have to pay to, you know, why can't I put like a phone thing in my closet? I guess you could, but just I mean, it's more than expense. just, it's more than just ensuring that your stuff it's doesn't show up in, it's more than just ensuring that your stuff doesn't show up in the spam box though. It's, you can, you can track whether or not people have opened it. You can track whether like it actually reached its destination or got bounced. I mean, there's, there's other things involved. All stuff you should be able to roll yourself, though. Yes, all stuff you should be able to roll yourself. But it's got a pretty interface. It's got a pretty dashboard. That's a pretty dashboard. Yeah, I will give it that. Out there that aren't going to roll it themselves. <laughs> Can we just take yeah, a minute? I mean, <laughs> oh, totally. I'm not going to. I'm just going to complain about it. But I, but I'm saying that the whole email system is is broke. And and to that end, like I guess it's not even really spam. It's really more the blacklisting. Having been on the side of um, an email server that was blacklisted. We were we weren't doing anything nefarious. It was legit, uh, like sending like receipts and tracking numbers and stuff, and we were blacklisted. So we hopped over to Mandrel and had to pay the, you know, pay to send it out, and it was a big increase in expense that we weren't expecting. Big increase, you know, like forty dollars a month or something insane like that. Jeez, the panopticon of expenses. Oh, maybe it means big. <laughs> I would watch a movie with that title. An Opticon of Expenses. You no, definitely an Opticon. Have you seen it in a movie? Mm, it depends on what movies you're watching. You might have seen a Panopticon in a movie at some point. Uh, oh, it's many it's many things. Many, <laughs> many, many something. Eyeballs. That, which is, eyeballs. Which, is basically, yeah, which is basically what we established early in the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> gotten is gotten it, exactly be... from here to here. Elton John's eyewear. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um a panoply. What's a panoply, Gary? Uh it's a board game that takes forever to complete. That's a Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say it's multiple <laughs> Monopoly games put together. Ooh, yeah, that would be. You know horrible. when chess masters play multiple people at the same time? It's like that yeah, with Monopoly. Monopoly. It's really sucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait. If if Monopoly if Monopoly means that they're like a single like single ownership of a lot of things, then Panoply would mean like a pineapple. Of multiple, multiple like the opposite of Monopoly, because mono versus pan. Yeah. Uh, well, duopoly is two, so panoply. Yeah, okay. I like where you're going with this. Uh, uh, a panopticon is a doctor's office that has multiple doctors in it. <laughs> Eye doctors. I'm gonna go to the panopticon today. I feel like, although <laughs> that was a reach. although <laughs> optic is part of the word and does mean eye stuff. I feel like we're getting, I feel like you're getting hung up on the eye part of Panopticon. And I, I don't know that that is, that is where that part of the word is coming from this time. Op, the word optic is literally in the middle of it, Chris. I realize that. Okay. <laughs> I am aware. Wait, of... actually, I say that. Did we actually have it spelled? <laughs> Pan and optic and on, I believe, is how yes. you spell it. Yeah. Okay. Well, but it would be funny if this whole time I'm just sitting here being like, well, I didn't ask, so I'm just going <laughs> to run with it. Yeah, you're not even close. There's a silent W. <laughs> Three R's in a row. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Like, do you roll it? I'm not sure. <laughs> the silent J. Yeah. Panhopticon. Dang, the birds are active today. It must be the weather. It's so cold. That was a that was a segue. <laughs> I just, I saw two birds fly by. I don't know if you've noticed, but my, everything is shifted in my packing. I got rid of my extra monitor. So now I'm looking directly 
the geometry of my communication is off. Struggling here. The geometry of your okay. Well, usually I'm. You're there. Yeah. But I feel kind of like a jerk looking over there. Not when I was distracted by the birds, obviously, but generally, I feel like a jerk looking over there. <laughs> it, wait, so you packed your other monitor, so you only have just the monitor on your laptop? Correct. Whereas before, you had a separate monitor? Correct. That had all other stuff? So in well, your I head, would often turn we... it off. So you're, in your head, do we only live on one monitor? I mean, in my head, you only live on one of my monitors. I have a monitor <laughs> over here, but you're not over there. You're right here. I very rarely would put meetings on the other monitor. Meetings yeah. always were on this monitor oh, because that's no. where the camera was. And so yeah, I could right. okay. make eye contact. Yeah. Yeah. Which same very I always, obvious I always when I was working put... on something else. I always put the the zoom window on this on this screen because this is where the camera is. Yeah. Maybe that's and to make it even con. weirder. I'm using um my Mac Opticon today. is the usage of multiple monitors. <laughs> instead of my mis- normal laptop. The misdirect on eye contact when you you look at the wrong monitor. <laughs> I hate that cat. I'll take her. Well, it's a him, but I'll pack him up. I'll I'll take him. (laughs) I have boxes. I'll ship them to you. (laughs) Not sure. Not sure he would survive the trip. Maybe. Oh, no. This cat would survive. This cat will never die. (laughs) Cat would be fine. Cat would come out stronger. I wouldn't (laughs) want to be the person who opens the box. but (laughs) Actually, uh, a couple days ago, the cat was, I don't know what was happening. Jude was sleeping, and the cat, like, jumped up to where Jude was, and I don't know if like jumped on Jude or what, but Jude got all mad and, you know, and like, he didn't really bite the cat, but like put his mouth around the cat. Like, don't mess with me. Mm -hmm. Like, look, asshole. (laughs) You're like eight times the size of the cat. Quit it. You know, I say that. I think he's only four and a half times once in a while. I, well, that cat sure has when they were younger. Jude would come and like, you know, nose the cat's belly three or four times and the cat would finally just get pissed and like whap, like right in the <laughs> nose. I mean, draw drew blood a couple times. Dog would always yelp and come running over to me, like, you'll never believe what the cat did. Like, get out of here. <laughs> <You'll never laughs> like, I'll believe it. It was a panopticon. It was a panopticon. Yeah. Um, I saw on, I think it was Twitter, someone posted that, I don't remember when, like 1500s, people would rent pineapples for parties. Wait, Just what? Pineapples <laughs> were, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Pack that one Pineapples <laughs> were like a very exotic fruit, so people would, would rent them just to display them at parties. I'm so baller, I got a pineapple. But, like that's, but, but not to eat them. No, no, they're too expensive to eat. You would just display the thing and then return it when you were done. Is that, not, is that not insane? Doesn't that doesn't, wild? Isn't Maybe there, the isn't isn't there a wild? shelf life? Pineapples last a pretty long time without being. You're like, this moldy pineapple is a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Aged to perfection. <laughs> <laughs> Get okay. a nice pineapple nose on it. <laughs> uh, you heard it here first, uh, folks, uh, listeners to Binary Jazz. Let us know about all of your pineapple renting experiences. If someone was alive, if you donate fifty dollars to us, we will send you a pineapple. (laughs) Yeah, we'll figure out a way. We'll figure it out. We'll make it happen, (laughs) even if it's made out of paper. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, could you fold? Could you origami a pineapple? That'd be a pretty neat origami. Is that what you call? Sure, someone could. Is it origami? Is it? I personally cannot, but I'm sure someone. Yeah, I can't either. I mean, I've seen those sort of like paper, oh, yeah, like the party. sculpture things that you like open up and it like yeah. comes out. <laughs> Not quite what I was thinking, shape. but all right, we can live with that. Yeah, it's gonna be cheaper to mail that. It's flat, kind of origami-ish. You know? yeah, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Is, is a panopticon like a cornucopia? Uh, yes, that's what I'll say. Yes, okay. sure. Okay. What's a cornucopia? 
Uh, it's that horned thing that has fruit falling out of it that you see around. Um, when do you see it? Thanksgiving? U.S. Thanksgiving. Is that well, what the cornucopia? You, 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 you only see it. Cornucopias? It, it, well, at elementary on, school, on, Gary, it's everyone, in, it's, knows, everyone it's knows that the cornucopia the, is the part, is the thing in the Hunger Games where all the weapons and stuff are stored. So at the beginning oh. of the Hunger Games, you have to make a mad dash to the cornucopia to get the stuff so that you can kill all the other Hunger Games contestants. I don't know why I don't remember those books very well. I read them while I was traveling. Maybe it was like jet lag. I just didn't. But you're right. You're right. <laughs> I, I stand, sit, corrected. Uh, sit corrected. But a panopticon is not that. <laughs> it might be. You don't know that. Panopticon, the Panopticon is, is the, uh, the weird stadium that uh, the Hunger Games take place in. Like it's like in it's like in uh in what I'm is it? not is buying it. Is it, it you you I, I want to say UHF, but that's the wrong thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's ultimate fighting the... champ UFC, um, where they have the octagon. It's oh. the panopticon. How many sides does it have then? Of uh, many, many sided object. <laughs> that's what it is. It's a many sided object. Panopticon. All of our geometry teacher listeners are just loving this. <laughs> well, it's all right. You know, school year is almost over. They're working from home, so they're drunk. And not That's wearing not pants. True. I apologize if I insulted you if you're a geometry teacher. <laughs> Drinks are on me next time we meet. Uh, you heard it here first, uh, Binary Jazz listeners. If you are a geometry teacher and you meet Gary in the wild, drinks are on him. <laughs> Only if you were insulted by the Panopticon conversation. Uh, nope, that's, that was not specified. <laughs> do, we, do we know many geometry teachers? Do you know any? Uh, I haven't known a geometry teacher since I was in high school. Yeah. <laughs> Allison? Um, yeah, I think all of my teacher friends are not geometry teachers. Unless maybe yeah. it's in- included in regular math. But they're like more generalized teachers, generally. Yeah. Generally. Generalized, generally. Generally, generalized. Generalized teachers, generally. <laughs> um, so real life geometry recently, uh, in response to the, uh, God bless, that's another cloud for notification. <laughs> um, in response to the uh, pandemic uh, to help heal us all. The Blue Angels will be flying over select cities, and Jacksonville is one of them on Friday, tomorrow. Uh, Are they going to be so, dropping vaccines? Like, what's the, how is that? No, no, no. Out? I think that they will be literally flying over. That's... Bringing good cool. cheer. Like Santa and his sleigh. Perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, I, so I the don't conversation know that is that where way. should you, where should we try and observe from? Because they've right. released the flight path. Okay, cool. Flight path released. Um, I... <laughs> I don't know. Like, the, quite, there, there's a bunch of assumptions. Like, well, what altitude will I be flying at? Like, and then, so using the Pythagorean theorem, we have mapped out several empty parking lots that I say we, I, mapped out several empty parking lots that I think might make sense. Uh, but they also have like the entrance and exit time of the flight path. So you have to kind of extrapolate from there. Like, when should you be uh-huh. this empty parking lot? You should just bring a, like a little picnic, <clears throat> and I feel like that's down. I feel like that's more advanced. I think that's that that is like trigonometry. Not that I've ever taken trigonometry, but like I feel oh. like that's that's not just geometry. <laughs> when, well, because you're when combining, you start when you start combining like time. Yeah, you're combining and, time and and space placements. Yeah. Um. Well, you know, as a uh, a dabbler in um, orbital dynamics. As a back alley astronaut. Back, back alley astronaut. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we could bring that back in. It's been a oh. It's been tomorrow missing. they are shooting photos of this house, and my space helmet is on the top of Tyler's bed, and I that's the one thing I am really excited about being the photos. The I'm surprised helmet. you haven't used that as like a mask. <laughs> like going outside. Wouldn't that be cool walking store? around and like yeah? And I get it to pay, and I push the <laughs> visor pops up, so I can bend <laughs> my pin, and pop the visor back down. 
Has the, um, um, so I, 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 was, I, very little <laughs> has reached my ears about how uh, shitty things are in Florida right now, but a few things have. <laughs> And one of those, one of those things, besides everybody just going to the beach, yeah, uh, is that there's a dude wearing uh, a death costume that is sort of monitoring the beach and telling people that uh, they shouldn't be there. Um, and I was wondering, like, is it just one beach that he goes to? Is it like, is he like traveling along the coast? Has he reached Jacksonville? Like, is he touring? I'm avoiding the beach? I wouldn't know. <laughs> The beach thing is really interesting to me. Um, so Jacksonville uh, was called out pretty loudly in the national yeah. media yeah. Um, when the beaches opened. And looking at photos, like it was sort of like down the beach, um, from overhead shots, it was really like family groups of people that were pretty well separated, um, you know, doing activity things. Um, the hanging out on the beach thing is, is not allowed and the police are chasing people around. They're taken and like setting up umbrellas and towels and stuff. But the folks that were wandering around, I, I think it wasn't um, nearly as compressed as it looked in the photo. Uh, in fact, I'm sure that's the case. Um, now, having said that, I'm not going to the beach. But were I to live near the beach, like within walking distance, uh, I, I might have wandered over and looked to see if it was worth, you know, going for a walk with the fam or not, if people were spaced out enough. Um, Cause there's a low tide, there's a lot of space. So. Um, so it's not as now, bad Clearwater as it Beach, looks, is what you're saying. Yeah, Clearwater Beach had some um, issues when they opened because uh, they had an open time of like 9 a.m. and people started lining up <laughs> at the gate. <laughs> it's like 7.30. Well, all right. All right. Um, yeah, I think Florida's going to have a pretty, uh, pretty massive bounce here soon. I was at Home Depot on Sunday. I needed to go get some stuff to finish the house to, to sell it. And I was like, I pulled in the parking lot. It was, it was as packed as I've ever seen it. Mm -hmm. I mean, even after hurricanes and I'm in the, you know, I'm, I'm masked up and I'm like, do I, I was trying to like, have, I was having this conversation with myself. Like, do I really need this thing to finish or can mm -hmm. I do it like some other way without having to buy stuff? And it was one thing that I couldn't buy and have in-store pickup. Like I had to go in and get it. They wouldn't offer in-store pickup or, you know, parking lot pickup. So I finally decided, all right, I'm not going to get it. Uh, and I mean, it was like, it was just, it was packed. People were not keeping distance at all. So I took the long way around. I had to go over to lumber. And so I, I cut through uh, plumbing. I mean, the weird plumbing stuff, not like, you know, decorative <laughs> sinks, but like the plumbing stuff that no one's there to buy anyway. Yeah. And then, uh, made my way end around and then got, came to the front and saw these massive lines for like self checkout thinking that would be safer. And then ended up going to in-person checkout where they have Home Depot has installed um, buffet sneeze guards mm -hmm. and uh, stacked, uh, stacked buckets to keep people physically distant from, distant from the counter, which I thought was brilliant. I mean, if Home Depot has anything, it's buckets <laughs> um, and they're orange. So, you can't miss them. So that, that actually leads me to a question that, that Aaron had uh, for yes. you, Gary. And since we're uh -oh. into the questions section of, of the show, we might as well ask it here. Um, yeah. So you're, you're packing up, you're getting ready to move. How many buckets is the right amount of buckets to bring to the new house? Like what is well, the essential number of buckets? And bonus question, <laughs> can buckets be used instead of moving boxes? Oh. Well, bonus question, the answer is yes, which <laughs> means the preceding question is all of them because I can pack tools and other odds and ends in them. Um, I have uh, a bucket that has um, a lot of stuff related to tiling. Are you kidding me, Cloudflare? Um, I have another bucket um, that has um, uh, like lawn care stuff that I wouldn't necessarily want to pack in a box, but I may as well take with me, you know? So yes, absolutely, buckets can be used for packing things and they will all be used. But not like for clothing and stuff, just for like out. I won't, stuff. no, no, I won't use them for clothing. Uh, I intend to just get rid of clothing and then go thrift shopping. Not well, get how rid many, of all of but it. how many buckets are we talking about here? Like 50? No, I think I own like 12 maybe. So 12 is the right number of buckets. I mean, or less, somewhere in that range. 
So, somewhere between 12 and less is the right number yeah. of buckets. But not so, zero. Like so I would, I would be at the less oh, no, zero. category. <laughs> yeah. Did, um, before we get too far into this, do we figure out what panopticon means? No. Or are we just not doing we that have today? Not. Okay. We have not. Right. I, 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 would we like to know? I jumped the question uh, before the answer. Yes, yes. Let's find out what panopticon is so it won't be uh, bothering me for the rest of the A cliffhanger? Yeah. Um, Panopticon is a type of building and a system of control. So it's uh, originally designed for prisoners, so they can all be observed by a single security guard in the middle. Yep. And they're all along the outside without the inmates being able to tell if they're being watched or not. That's fabulous. Um, I'm going to tell like, my realtor. Even though it's impossible for the guards, <laughs> even though it's impossible for the guard to be observing everybody at once, the inmates don't know this, and so they have to be motivated to act as if they are being watched at all times. So, so a panopticon, in a metaphorical sense, is the feeling that you're being watched, even if you might not, like 24-7, even if you might not be watched 24-7. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Most importantly. That's probably the context in which I've heard it, and that's probably the reason why I forgot. <laughs> Most importantly, it is shaped somewhat like a pineapple. Yes, it's like the rotunda of. Yeah. But so I to... wasn't wrong about the Hunger Games <laughs> stadium being a panopticon because yeah. they were constantly watched. Exactly. Yeah. I only know, this I was is like, like the I inverse instead of being at the center fun. looking out. Like it's. Yeah. Wow. Well, I feel smarter for having now. I feel pay. now. I feel like I need to read the books again just to see if they actually referred to the stadium as a as a panopticon. <laughs> Couldn't you just download the PDFs and search for that word? Uh, uh, that's probably. no fun. <laughs> that's no fun. <laughs> it's more efficient, though. Yeah, yeah, it's it's more efficient. Um, maybe. Go ahead. I was gonna say maybe maybe we should just bit torrent all books that exist and find hits on the word panopticon and then extrapolate context from there. That is definitely a thing that we could do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know uh, that you'd be able to bit torrent all books. There's uh, a fair few books of like, especially older books that are just like open source. Hey. Yeah. You probably couldn't bit torrent all books. No, I've tried. I don't like, and all books don't deserve to be bit torrented. That's true. Be honest. Well, and further, some books deserve to not be bit torrented and purchased. Yeah, exactly. Bit torrent. Some, bit, some bit torrenting books. books bit, torrenting. bit torrenting books is for like the trash that you know that you don't want to keep. Um, I um, you know, like the whole like, oh, I own a copy of it, so I bit torrent it, right? Like, so I have a digital copy of it. You buy a CD and then. That makes it legal to download as opposed to ripping. I have applied the same logic to um, to two computer books, but I purchased the book on Amazon so I could BitTorrent it and stick it on my Kindle because it wasn't available as a uh, either on Amazon or anywhere else to purchase as a digital book. But someone had it digitally because it was available for bit. anyway. <laughs> Dumb, but here we are. Yes, it's uh... this timeline. I, I recently, I recently, well, Aaron recently uh, decided to uh, get a Kindle. I had been like telling her that she should have a Kindle for like years. And she's like, no, 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 no. And uh, then she's like, okay, let's try it. And now she like loves it, uh, especially since like we can't go to the library anymore and we can't mm -hmm. like, and then you're buying books all the time and there's not always the books that you want. You can't always get the, like, you can't always bit torrent all the books because um, they're just not available. Uh, but they are available on Amazon if you or whatever if you want to get them on Kindle. So, um, so we did How that, and then is. and then because we couldn't go to the library and the kids are running out of stuff to read, we got the kids both Kindles. So now they're reading on Kindles. Now we have a whole like collection of Kindles. Yes, a family of Kindles, uh, except for me because I don't read anything except that doesn't look like something like this. But the only but that's the only available. books that I read. Yeah. Um, are they like the? The e-ink screens, or are they like the Kindle yeah. tablets? Yeah. Yeah. I love that, because the battery lasts for a stupid amount of time. Yeah, they're, they're the paper. It, oh, yeah. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz.
Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.